Real talk about real life. Spiritual maturity. Faith. Leadership. Growth. Welcome to Life Beyond Sunday podcast. Hey everyone, welcome to Life Beyond Sunday. I was trained how to do a better intro <laughs> on the last episode, so if you missed it, go back. Was that better? Was that an improvement? Except for that that at lib about you were trained on it. You yeah. should just roll with should've it. Should have just rolled with it, but Next it's okay. Time. There's Next an improvement. You're growing. Thank there you. Yep. It's what it's all about, improvement. Yep. <laughs> so we, we left off last episode. We left hanging a little bit, mm-hmm. right? Shayla was like, all right, let's leave a little cliffhanger. <laughs> Um, so we, we talked a little bit about your journey with infertility and we left off where they basically, you decided to foster Mm -hmm. and they basically called you and said, here's a baby Mm -hmm. essentially. Mm -hmm. And you go pick up this Mm -hmm. child and that's kind of where we left off. Yeah. So we're going to dive into the foster care system. Do you want to hear the rest of that story? I do want to hear it. Yeah, I do want to I mean, I think people were... Okay. ready to hear it so and I, now you're trying I was to move leading on. in no i was leading oh. into the story oh. Oh. Did, don't be okay. bossy give right. it a minute Go ahead. now i lost my train of thought okay All right. i thought you were gonna ask a question about the foster care system no not yet i'm gonna finish the story but okay. man i lost it i was going somewhere okay anyways so we pick up the baby we you pick up the baby and so what you're like you're like okay what do we do now yes. you give them your driver's license they give you yep. a child yep. what do you do so i remember walking out of there putting Alexander in the back of my truck and us sitting in the front seat and we just start laughing. No, I sat in the back seat oh, because I think he was sitting up too much. I'm like holding his head back <laughs> because I'm like, I don't think I have the car seat at the right <laughs> angle. And I don't want him to like. <laughs> but we are, we are like laughing. We're like, they just gave us a baby. All we showed them was our license and they gave us a baby. We don't know what to do. We're like, should we stop and get formula? Do we buy diaper? Like we, we didn't have any idea. We're like, we're just going to get home and then we'll, f- we'll, f- one of we'll us can go out, out. We'll figure it out. And I remember we got home. Our, our connect group is all still there. Like all the cars are still in our driveway. There's, I mean, and, and we rolled in and instead of doing connect group, they all went and they went shopping. shopping. Oh, and basically it was like a baby shower for us when we got back. They had formula, they had diapers, they had clothes, they had blankets. They had like, it was, it, I could tear up just yeah, thinking about. Yeah, I mean, about, it makes me. Yeah, it's like this is why you need community in your yeah. life mm-hmm. because yeah. I mean, I, it was such a blessing to us. And they actually knew what we were supposed to do. Like they had had kids. <laughs> 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 so did they walk you through like, okay, first now let's or? Well, I mean, we were googling how much formula does a <laughs> newborn drink? You know, like thank goodness for Google. Google <laughs> saved us a lot of. Uh, probably really dumb questions to people. Yeah. But I remember we, we got, we got home and, you know, we're showing Alexander off and he, he starts to have tremors. Yeah. It's like a, a symptom of the drug exposure. And, uh, and right there that night with all those people around, we just, we laid hands on him and we prayed that God would. God would heal him. Heal him. And at the time when that we picked him up, they said, man, he, he has kidney issues like he might have to we don't even know if his kidney's gonna work like there was there was all kinds of doctor things and we prayed that night and god he never had another tremor they said he would be like very difficult to soothe because of the drug exposure there's a lot of things that drug exposed kids have like in just in in general they have like this cry and this scream and all of these things and he never had any of it he was the easiest kid to like connect with and like yeah it was it was amazing yeah. but god healed him i believe in that moment yeah. and if that was the only reason we had him yeah that was, you know is is a great mm-hmm. great yeah. thing and what was the what was it like like the bonding experience when you bring him home is it something like was it like immediate or is it something that takes a while what is that what is i that? mean for us i think it was immediate yeah, yeah. and he he was a pretty easy baby for the most part, yeah. like, you know, I don't have anything to compare it to, <laughs> but for the most part. Compared to what other people talk about, I feel yeah. like. You like, guys got sleep and. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, we, we created schedules where Shayla would take like four nights with him. We actually, we, we put him in his room almost right away. Mm-hmm. 
we threw a mattress on the floor. And so one of us would take, she took four nights and I took three nights. So one of us was getting sleep. So one of us was getting sleep. (laughs) So we could, we could, we still had a church to run. We still had obligations. Our life changed. Still had your first baby like, to run. Yeah, we still had our first baby to take care of, and so we just figured out a, a rhythm where we both, we both sacrificed. And but in in the foster care system, you know, there's a lot of a lot of things that that you have to, you know, you have visits from caseworkers, you have um, guardian at litems that are coming. You have court hearings that are happening. You have visitation that you're having to take. So, like, just life got insane super busy you know how long was uh, how long was alexander with you about 18 months and so during those 18 months i think you guys had plans to you wanted to adopt him or were you yeah so in the foster care system they they tell you you know the goal of foster care is reunification like they pound that into you and so we went into it knowing like okay the goal of foster care is reunification In Alexander's case, probably about halfway through the case, um, his parents weren't taking the proper steps to allow that reunification to happen. And so partway through the case, the goal of our case got changed to adoption. And so when the goal of our case changed to adoption, our, you know, like it was just like, okay, this is, this is is our forever kid, you know? Um, I think when the case changed to adoption, his dad, who's an amazing man, like really was like, oh man, I'm at risk for like losing this kid forever. And it kind of kicked him into gear, I think. And he started doing all of the things that he needed to do in order to have Alexander permanently. And so the goal then changed back to reunification. So our Which emotions- Which is super rare. Yeah. yeah, it is rare, but our emotions are on like this roller coaster of like, okay, this kid's temp, you know, it's temporary. Oh, now it's, you know, mm-hmm. forever. It, it also, and now it's temporary. It and- also changed a lot. Like we went through multiple case workers in the system. Oh, it was, uh, multiple and everything starts back over. Guardian ad no, items. Yeah, it was, it, it was like, it's nothing against it. It is the most broken system yes, on the planet. Yes. It's, and it's, The only thing that was consistent in the process was we had an incredible judge. Mm -hmm. Um, I went to court at every single court hearing and the judge actually really cares about the child and what's best for the child. The rest of the system jacked up, messed up. But that judge was, I I can remember her being like, y'all got to give me something like (laughs) And and I would raise my hand in court, and she'd be like, "Foster dad, what do you?" Because they they would they would literally lie in court, and I'd be like, "That's not true. That's not true. That's not true." Here's what really happened, and if if I wasn't there, there would be no accountability for for just they're they're just trying to gain metrics in the system. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But what is your heart going through at that moment, right? Because like you said, you're obviously your attachment was immediate. Mm-hmm. Now. Oh my gosh. Okay. The goal's adoption. Okay. This is, this is our, this is our answered prayer, Mm -hmm. right? Absolutely. This is, this is, this is, this is our miracle child. This is what we've been praying for. And then now we change to reunification again. Mm -hmm. I mean, I just can't imagine, (laughs) is there a struggle? I mean, I, I can't, I would be having such a struggle with God at that point of like, what am I, what are you doing? Are you just playing with me at this point or I mean, I know your faith is strong, so maybe you. No, 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 no. it was I mean, absolutely yeah, yeah. that. So it, how do you how do you how do you digest that? I don't know. Mm. How do you deal with that? I I mean, for me, it was I'm gonna fight in the system the only way I can, which is going to court, trying to trying to tell the truth, and and at the end of the day, I want what's best for Alexander. Like, do I think what's best for him was with us? Yes, but. If it's going to go that way, I want to make sure that he is set up the best that he possibly can. And I want these people to be honest and truthful. Mm-hmm. Don't don't lie just because it makes your metrics better so that way you get bonuses. Mm-hmm. No, no, no. Let's make sure we're actually setting this kid up for success for his future. Mm-hmm. And I feel like we force the, the system in a lot of ways to do that. Mm-hmm. And at the same point, we gained a lot of respect for his 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 biological dad because his biological dad had to overcome a lot of things yeah to get his son back and you can't like i was never upset at his father because his father was fighting for his son and who wouldn't want somebody to fight somebody for to you. fight for you 
somebody to fight to have you. And so it, it was, it was this hard thing because people would be like, man, I'm praying that his dad will have, you know, relapse. And I'm like, no, man, that's not, <laughs> that's not the right. I understand your heart that you want to, like, you could see how much we love this kid and we want, we want this kid, but I don't want it at the demise of somebody else. Mm -hmm. And that was an interesting kind of internal fight because you're like, Maybe a relapse wouldn't be bad. Yeah, you know, like, but at the same point, like, man, I, I want, I want what's best for people. Like, I really, really do. And I think in that, I remember going through that process and when we got to the day of reunification. Um, but even, even before that, though, I think when we realized, like, when we realized, all right, this is like, he's going to get reunified. Like, there's dad's done everything he yeah. needs to do. Like you have a choice at that moment, you know? And I think I made the, I think you made the choice too. We kind of played different roles in the whole thing, but I just said, you know what, if this is happening, I'm going to do my best to build an incredible relationship with his dad. And hopefully this, this, this relationship doesn't have to end when this case is closed. Mm -hmm. And I, I remember going, okay, he's going to need daycare. He's going to need clothes. He's going to need. And so I, I said to his dad, Hey, can we drive around together and look at daycares in your community? Can I take you? He doesn't, he's legally blind. So he doesn't drive or do any of those things. And so he and I drove around and looked at daycares, made the decision together, like, you know, just whatever we could do to support him. If this was going to happen, he was going to need people behind him that was going to help make Alexander's life better. Yeah. yeah. And I was grateful that his dad was open to that, yeah. you know, and allowed like, okay, these people have cared for my son since birth. That can be very intimidating, but he had a very open heart and open hand. And that like, we still have a relationship with Alexander to this day, you know, he'll be six March and you know, what is that relationship well, before I ask that question, what was it like when you finally had to say, did you go through like a, a mourning process? Oh, oh 100%. Now you could say like that last day of court when they were reunifying. Oh my gosh. Yeah. It was uh, that last day of court when they, when the reunification was happening, I, I remember sitting in there and, you know, uh, like basically the judge, all the people were like, they begged us to be foster parents again. <laughs> Uh, cause they're like, we've never seen anything like this. Cause I said, Hey, at the end of this, we're going to, we're going to, we're going to take the dad. I'm not going to say his name, but, and Alexander, we're going to drive them home. We've got all of his clothes. We've got his bed. We've got everything. So this whole courtroom sees Alexander's dad walk out with TJ, get into our car oh, wow. and we're going to drive him and Alexander to like drop him off forever. I mean, like literally the. The lawyers are coming down. The like the guardian at light. Guardian at light. Everybody's coming down because they they just have never, never seen this happen before. Yeah, what an amazing testimony of like Jesus in mm -hmm. somebody's life. Well, Alexander's dad still call he calls me his guardian angel. You know, like you guys have been a godsend. Yeah, and yeah. and I think I I know I went through a pro. It's a grieving process, right? It's loss. Yeah, it is like. TJ had pretty much an emotional breakdown once when that was happening. Like it, it is a, is a huge deep void in your life. And well, well, it's like, okay, God, you're fulfilling something in our heart that our heart has always longed for. And now it feels like it's being ripped away. Um, I think in, in that process, I know God spoke a lot to me because I, I just, God already knows what's in our heart. Right. So when we're walking through difficulty he already knows that we're angry or we're frustrated or whatever. So I was just very honest in my, my like conversations with God in my prayer, like, God, I'm mad. Mm -hmm. Like, I felt like you asked us to do this. We were obedient to do it. But now, now you just rip it away. Like you just take it away. I don't, I don't understand. And I remember God clearly saying to me, I didn't ask you to be obedient to an outcome. I asked you to be obedient. And I was like, oh. because he didn't tell me when you foster that that's going to end up in adoption. He just said, you have an open room and an open heart. Make a difference. Yeah. And he did. And I did. 
and it will forever shape our life in the most beautiful way. I wouldn't change. I wouldn't change the decision, you know, to, to foster. <laughs> <laughs> um, and and I think in that season of having to let Alexander go and like him being reunified with his dad, I remember God also really like shaping some things in my heart and saying that Alexander's purpose was not limited to our last name that he could raise him up out of any situation, that his purpose doesn't change whether he's with us or with his father. Like he has ordained him and called him in such a way that his circumstances don't change his purpose. And so I can let go (laughs) knowing that that's not going to define him. I think think for me, like in that process, I ended up going to some really intense counseling. Mm -hmm. It ended up revealing like a whole bunch of broken things from my childhood that I never dealt with that all of a sudden surfaced out of losing him and why I was why I was having a mental breakdown is because it was just it was deep-seated issues that I'd never dealt with in my life that caused me to have to look at them address them and hand them over to God and like I would have never dealt with that stuff had it not been for him being in our life well, and I think that's a key thing for anybody that's walking through pain, difficulty, loss, grief, any of those, any of those things. I don't, I don't think we can just like push it away or push it down or try to ignore it or just like plow through it. There is something so powerful about just having an honest, authentic um, conversation with God Um And allow going to counseling, like allowing healing to happen because I feel like we're better people because of the hurt, the difficulty, the losses that we've experienced in our life. They like people say it makes you bitter or it makes you better. Mm -hmm. And that's really your choice when you walk through those things. Am I going to allow what I'm walking through to shape me in a harmful way, in a bad way, or am I going to allow it to propel me forward to heal and to have greater capacity in my life. Yeah. Yeah. And what does your relationship look like today with Alexander? Uh, I mean, we're his godparents. Yep. His dad asked us if we could be his godparents. Mm-hmm. Shayla's name is still mommy. Mm-hmm. I'm pop pop. And so, you know, we're, we, we play a role in his life. Mm-hmm. We get to see him. He but, loves to come over to our house yeah. and he wants to go to the store and buy presents all the time. <laughs> <laughs> we're basically glorified grandparents at this point. That's what it kind of is like, but. I mean, it's, it's, we have a great relationship with him. Mm-hmm. He uh, loves to come to church. He loves to come. He's, he's so social. He let like TJ's parents live here. Now his mom lives here and he loves to get to hang out with grandma. And, you know, I feel like he has two amazing sets of, you know, families. Yeah. That's awesome. Mm-hmm. And what would you guys say is the, like talking about fostering, mm-hmm. What are a couple things you went into the system a little bit? What are some of the things that are like broken that you're like, man, this, this is something I wish people knew about or something that I wish we could change or something, you know, what? Yeah. I mean, a lot of it has to do with, with how the laws are written Mm -hmm. and you know, the, the system is the law dictates to the system what's going to happen. So like our judge would be like, man, I can't, like, I know what should be done, but I can't do anything because a law handcuffs me. Mm -hmm. Um, And so, you know, there needs to be law changes. And we've been working on that through, through some. Well, we haven't, but. We, we've been a part of some organizations that have been in the process of getting laws changed over the last couple of years. And there's been progress in that to where now technically by the law, if a child's in the foster care system for more than a year, they're like the parental rights are supposed to be kind of cut off, trying to make it so that kids aren't stuck in the system forever. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, because which, that happens a lot, right? Because the purpose is reunification. Sometimes kids end up in the system for years and years at a time yeah. because you because they're always restarting the process. They're right? restarting the process. For a kid, that's so difficult to yeah. like, people are in and out of their life or they're being shifted around or it's like you have hopes of this and then something doesn't happen. And like, I feel like there's a cycle of just disappointment that just creates, you know? Yeah. Or let me ask you this. Would you foster again? Uh, (laughs) I I (laughs) think, um, it's like way to put me on the spot, Kelly. I think there was a point where, where we would, I think fostering is amazing. Yeah. 
I think it's a brutal process, brutal and beautiful mm-hmm. all at the same time. And I think that if we weren't pastoring and like leading a larger organization, um, the emotional weight of that, like walking through the unknowns of the foster care system, um, was a weight that we didn't really have any idea. And pastoring in and of itself is an emotional weight that most people have no concept of. And so I think the combination of those two was was pretty crushing for us in, in that season. And I'm not sure that that's the healthiest thing for us. I think if we weren't in the position that we were, were in right now, maybe. I think... I think how the system was designed at the time really forced us to not we may fall have forward. again yeah if if it would have been done differently yeah we probably would have fostered again yeah did you what was your biggest i mean obviously I, your biggest challenge was was the process of reunification and losing mm-hmm. alexander mm-hmm. permanently like as you know mm-hmm. but what was your biggest challenge in the system and of itself that you're like oh my gosh this is this is this makes it very difficult this makes it i think the changing of the of our caseworker caseworker because every you know you 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 establish a rapport with this person that is working in there um then they leave somebody else comes, comes in. in all they're doing is reading notes they don't really know they don't. and then they leave and somebody else comes in and what are those changes just like that people leave, i mean in the in the foster care system world like that's a really difficult job you're seeing a lot of difficult things and like you so i think their turnover rate as far as caseworkers is probably pretty high mm-hmm. just because of the things that they're having to deal with and they lose compassion yes and they lose they lose touch with the the real pain and experiences with because it they i think they just get numb yeah because they're seeing well, at one so point, much. Maybe it's almost protective, right? Like I'm not going to get too connected. Yeah, to this and and I un- I understand. Like I I get yeah. it. I can see. I'm not like it's not their fault, you know. But you have to work really hard to continue to maintain your compassionate heart and your understanding perspective, mm-hmm. you know. And I also get that not every every foster family was in, as as engaged <laughs> as we were, because I mean, we didn't miss. I didn't miss a court day, like. We, we kind of had roles in this. And so I did all the the legal stuff and Shayla did all the visitation. So we we were we were each kind of fighting yeah. our own battles. Mm-hmm. Visitation, people come and watch you or visitation with the... No, with your chi- the the child is with the biological okay. family. Okay. Yeah. So you're having to take them somewhere. To, and I don't want people to, to listen to this and think foster care is painful or bad well, that, or difficult that's not true. or discouraged. Foster care is painful. I, I know, but I'm saying that's the only thing that you're walking. Cause I think there's a foster no, no, there's care. Being a foster parent joy. is, is a calling, I yeah. think. And if people are called to it, I think you have a special grace to be able to do that and to manage those things. But I think there's also on the flip side, there is loss that you experience, right? Like when that child is reunif- reunified. And I think one of the things that could be healthier in the system overall, whether it's the people that license families for foster care and are getting foster parents, is to be able to provide a resource for those families that have just experienced loss to heal. Mm-hmm. And I think they're doing a better job of that um, yeah. now. But I mean, it's a whole it's a whole family kind of healing because if you have kids and now this other kid that was in your house for however long is now gone, can you imagine what your kids are processing yeah. through? You know. Like, don't get me wrong. Like, I mean, I, I still pull, I pulled up videos this morning uh, after I finished my quiet time of Alexander running around and just laughing. Like, some of my greatest memories yeah. in life yeah. are part of that. See, I, I mean, I, the other day I watched him taking his first steps, you know, and like, I, I get to relive that over yeah. and over again. My, the screenshot on my phone is, is Alexander and I walking with Preacher and we're all step in step like perfect you know, like those are some of my favorite moments of life that I would never I wouldn't no matter how much pain I had in the process I would never trade those memories yeah you know it's also so beautiful about walking through some of that you you can really see God's heart for like when you look at it from the perspective of like we're adopted into God's family yeah. right like you see his heart 
so deeply for us, whether, you know, like Alexander was not born of us, but oh my gosh, that I was would our kid. murder you right. for that child. Right. Like, I you mean, still will. Yeah. I still yeah. will. Yeah. I mean, like, right. I under, like, I understand uh, the father's love for us yes. yeah. from that experience. Like, yep. I'm like, this isn't my kid, but like, man, I would, mm-hmm. like, it's my kid. I would die for this kid. I would yeah. die for yeah. this kid. Like, yeah. Yeah. I, I can, I under, I feel like I have a greater understanding of God's heart for us. Yeah. And if I'm somebody, I don't want this to come off negative, but if I'm somebody who's thinking of like, man, I'm, I'm, I'm dabbling with the idea mm-hmm. of fostering, right? And I'm thinking about it. What's the one thing that you would say, I don't know, like ask yourself this question or take this into consideration before you make that decision. If you, if, you know, if you could, if I, if we were having that conversation today. I'll, I mean, you have to go into it with the right perspective, you know, to realize like it's temporary yeah. and you have to maintain that perspective of like, I'm going to love, I'm going to care. I'm going to be graceful. Like you're, you're really, this is a, this is a, almost like you're, you're adopting or fostering this whole family, right? Like yeah. I, I do think sometimes it's not just about the kid, but if you have opportunity, like you can reach a family. Yeah. And so I think it's just going in with the right perspective of loving, nurture, nurturing, being the greatest resource you can to whatever is put in front of you. And I also think you have to go in with the perspective of my heart is going to get broken. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And and I'm okay with that. But Be- that means you do it right. That means you do you it right. You need to love because well. You're, you're, if, you, if you do it well, you're going to love that child like it's your own. Yeah. Yep. And, and it's when, gonna hurt. And when they get reunified... Because that's the goal and the objective. It is going to hurt. Yeah. Surround and, yourself with good people that yeah. can help you heal. So that's what I was going to ask you too. Man, this conversation is making me a little emotional. Is it? <laughs> <laughs> Jeez, sweating over here. That's one thing I was going to ask you is like, what can we like, okay, I haven't gone through this situation, right? And somebody near me is fostering or you guys, how, how can we, how can we support? What does that look like? Practically speaking, Mm -hmm. how do I support a family that's, you know, going through adoption who, or or, I'm sorry, going through fostering or, or even they've, they've lost a child Mm -hmm. due to reunification. What do I do? I think there, there, I think there was two or three things that made a big difference for us. Number one, if you can become a certified babysitter, yeah, <laughs> like deal. you, there's, there's like background checks and all that. They, you can only leave that kid with people that are like processed through the state. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And so if you want to be able to support a foster family, become like somebody that can watch their kid. Yeah. We had, we had, we had a, a couple and at the time our assistant, Melissa, yeah, who were like God sends to us because I mean, we, we still had travel we had to do. We had events mm-hmm. we had to be at like, and we needed somebody that we could trust mm-hmm. because again, we, we just, this is our kid. And I mean, we were, I was scheduled to, we were scheduled to be in Paris to like perform a wedding for people. Like literally these people stayed with our, our foster son and, and cared for him and loved him. Like is yeah. a huge thing for us. Mm-hmm. Do you, does family have to like, so if you want to leave with grandma, they have to be certified through the system too. I, I don't yes. remember. Yes. Yeah. But that, I remember that unless, being a big unless deal. You already ha- pre- unless you already have kids and your kids are going to that, then not necessarily. Okay. But in our case where we didn't have children, like if they wanted to do anything with them, they needed to be okay. go through the process. What else? Um, else? You were going to say, I think you were going to say two three or three thing. things. Yeah. You said one certified babysitter which is obviously the most important. I mean, I think this is the true with any kid or any person, like just coming out, letting them take a shower, you know, <laughs> like all of the, just being there for whatever they need, not trying to, you know, I think no matter what season people are walking through, if there's something difficult or something that they're, I think a lot of times we try to like, I need to say the right thing or I need like I need to have this advice or I need to and that is so far from no you're not going to have the right thing to say. Just be present. Yeah. Just be available. Just let them vent. Just let them talk and then say I really don't know what you're going through. I don't, I I can't even imagine. But I'm here for you. Laugh, cry, you know, whatever. Well, I, I remember when 
the day. My that, biggest pet peeve is people that are like, I totally understand. I'm like, no, you don't. You don't have any idea. You've never walked through this. No idea. <laughs> but like, I can remember the day that we'd come back from court or I'd come back from court and they said, hey, we're going to reunify. And then Shayla, but before we do that, he's going to do some weekend visits. And Shayla left with, that was on a Thursday. Shayla left with Alexander on Friday morning to take him to his dad's place. And when she left is when I had an emotional breakdown. Mm -hmm. And I texted the overseers of our church. And within 30 minutes, David Hughes, who's pastor of church by Glades, is one of the overseers. Like, he just came over to our house and sat there and cried with me. Mm -hmm. Like... There's a trend. The most broken times in our life, life. people have just come and been present. present. Yeah. You know, um, you know, you my don't have to say anything. My pastor was like, hey, we're going to get you in counseling. Like the next week we, we were at a, a week retreat of just, mm -hmm. just dealing with loss, yeah. you know? And, and so just people that are there practical. to practical, that are there to practically like, Hey, I just want to. I just want to, I don't have the answer, but I'm here to help. I'll do yeah. your dishes. I'll put you up in a hotel for the night. I'll yeah. watch your kids. I'll, yeah. you know, practical. And what not to say. If you're like the number one thing, please don't say this. Like, is there something that comes to mind where you're like, man, <laughs> Shay <laughs> Shayla's smirking. I mean, there's, a, like I said a few minutes ago, my one of my pet peeves is when people are like, I totally understand because I went through this and it's a completely different scenario, right? Like, it's okay to be like, I don't understand what you're going through. Like, mm -hmm. don't try to act like you do. Um, and the second thing is, I think there was a lot of things that God spoke to, at least me in that season. And I knew that we had to let Alexander go. But there were so many people that kept coming and going, you're going to get him back. He's your forever kid, you know. So maybe it's like, what are you praying for in this season? Not like, what am I praying for you? You know what I mean? Because I think that started to get frustrating of me having to go, but that's not really what I, what I feel like God's telling me, you know? So maybe it's just like, hey, what are you praying for that I can pray for, you know? And how, how can I just help and, and support you? Yeah. And it, so it's not like, not trying to understand necessarily and not just interjecting your own thought on something. And I would say just calling and going, hey, how are you doing? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I, I, it, it, a lot of it is, is just, it's just the caring aspect. Mm -hmm. Just care without answers. Yep. Yeah. Just go, man, that really sucks. Yeah, it does. Mm -hmm. Cool. Yeah. <laughs> and to kind of finalize, I like... I have kids. Mm -hmm. um, they are eight and five. Yep. And so they, um, th there's a lot of foster families at our church. Mm -hmm. Yes. And, um, a, and lot a lot of, of them, adopted families. A lot too. of adopted mm -hmm. families at our church. And a lot of times they're mixed race yep. families, yep. right? Which I think is a beautiful thing. Yes. And so I have conversations with my daughters about that very early on. So they, they know that families are built differently. Yes. So we talk about how there's various ways to build a family. Yep. Like sometimes mom and dad have them through the belly. Other times, you know, mm -hmm. they, they take, they, they, they care for a family because someone else who had it through right. the belly couldn't, that type of thing. So right. we, we try to preface those conversations. What is, what is some advice that you would give me, right? You have for, for parents or something that you would say, Hey, I would talk to your kids kids about this or I would tell them like one thing I say to my kids is um if you see something and you have questions come to mommy and daddy because mm -hmm. sometimes when you ask that child like oh why don't you look like your mom sometimes that could be you know that could be um and sometimes I'm like I look at Mauricio and I'm like I wonder if we're doing this right like I don't know if I'm giving the right advice I don't know if I'm you know I'm trying to you know I don't want to put that child mm -hmm. Um, in a situation that makes them feel uncomfortable. So my, I guess my question to you guys is, is there a word of advice that you would tell to someone like me who's parenting children, mm -hmm. who is around, like, you know, a lot of families that are adopted, fostering? I think how you right? said it was yeah. beautiful. Like, God creates families many different types of ways. Like, I don't know that I have any practical. I love I love the innocence of a kid's question, yes. though. Like, I, I would, I'm never offended if a kid's like, why should your baby look different? Like, like, <laughs> like, I love the authenticity of a young kid. Like now, if that's a teenager, I'm going to punch you in the face. <laughs> but like, because they're just a punk. But like, 
a young kid that's just curious. Like it's it's not out of like that's the thing that I, I love is like they don't know any they're they're just inquisitive and I yeah. think that's great that they are and that gives you an opportunity to have those conversations. Mm-hmm. And I think what you said is yeah your way perfect is fantastic. Yeah, okay. I don't think so I would doing, add to doing, that. We're doing you and Mao are doing, doing okay. a good job. We're doing good. All right, <laughs> <laughs> all right. I thank you guys again for yeah. always giving us the space to be able to ask questions that maybe sometimes we don't sure. feel like we yeah. can ask in other environments. So we appreciate you guys. Yeah, and we will see you guys next week. Thank you for joining us. See ya. Hey guys, thanks so much for watching another episode of Life Beyond Sunday. Make sure you like, subscribe, comment. We want to hear what you think. Hope you guys have an amazing week. We'll see you back next week. See you next week.